Hey everyone, and welcome to Almost Cancelled. I'm Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about Altered Carbon Season 1, Episode 4. It's called Force of Evil. Full spoilers for the episode, as always. Uh, and this is actually... I'm sure this is a title uh, of a noir from the, the 40s. I may be misremembering. Uh, I will but, have to take your word on it. It's not familiar to me, but um, that doesn't mean it's not. Well, it's making me wonder if all the titles are noirs, just because, because it just it seems like such a, a TV thing to do is to name them all after noirs. No, it does seem like because, a, an easy thing to do. Because I don't recognise Fallen Angel from last episode, but it sounds like it could be. Yeah, I'm just looking at the titles. Most of them look like they could be. Yeah. I'm not familiar with any outright, but they look like they could be. Yeah, I just, I'm just I'm clocking that. It's a, I'm sure there's a movie called Force of Evil. Or Force there of is. Evil. Force of Evil, 1948. Yeah, I think I've yeah I've seen that actually. <laughs> Have I? No, I I'm thinking know. I'm thinking of Touch of Evil. You are. This is a. It, it is a noir though. Oh okay. All right, I'll take the points for that. Uh, so <laughs> you got there uh, in a convoluted way, but well, technically you were right. We'll we'll see we'll see if episode f- uh, five uh, also has a has a noir title. We'll we'll, we'll check mm. before we <laughs> come on next time. Uh, but hey, so yeah, we're, we're going to talk about uh, Alt Carbon. Uh, I was a little bit down in the last episode. Not super so, but just I thought it was a bit, you know, meandering. Uh, and we'd had this one hyped up a little bit. Uh, this one is largely Kovach is being taken. It turns out that the the, the guy from uh, Winona Earp is actually Demi the Twin. Like, it's the same stack, but it's the copy from the other one that he killed in like episode one. Uh, and when he goes in the VR world, he sort of switches between the faces. So we see, like, kind of... Both. It was a good excuse to have both faces because you know we were questioning. You said, "Oh, I'm sure they'll get that actor back mm. again." And I was like, yeah, "But it's a different body." Uh, yeah. So they they just did both. We'll have a different body, and then yeah, we'll use his face again anyway. Yeah. Well, I was thinking cloning, like actually having the same body. Yeah, but... I just assumed he couldn't afford that. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Who is going to be the richest outside of the the one percenters? It's going to be the the ones who have the, who are the head of the black market. <laughs> it is it organized is. crime. So. I don't know. But anyway, so so that's what we see. And we basically get him being digitally interrogated and because so, he can kill him over and over again and torture him and just reset yeah, him. T- tortured more than interrogated. Yeah. And we get flashbacks, probably the most flashbacks we've ever had to the Envoy training uh, with Falconer and his sister's there as well. And it's basically the, the, the training he's remembering is the training of like withstanding this interrogation and how you can kind of fight back even though they control the world because it's a digital world. So that that was the, the the main bulk of the episode. Meanwhile, Ortega is putting her dead grandmother inside one of the uh, the perps who get because I, I was wondering what the point of that scene was early on. When you know, there's this just random guy being arrested and he's like screaming and like you know yeah. saying awful things. And to, she's yelling because she's trying to be on the phone. Yeah, uh, and he says something really dirty. Like, yeah, oh, does, does your mother look like you? I'll have my first mother daughter for you. Something. It gets really like vulgar, and she you know basically stuns him with the rod and knocks him out, and then. I'm like, okay, she's got an ID in her face. I can sense it, but I don't know what she's doing yet. And then it was like, okay, so she's put someone in him. I'm not sure who yet, because this is when she's at the stall, and he's just yeah. like, oh, are you eating enough? And I'm like, who is this? Because yeah. at first I'm like, did she put like the dead girls? Yeah, there? and then she Something? says, yeah, you're, you're, you're sleeve sick. Yeah. So it's like, okay, so there's definitely someone new in there. Uh, and then she gets home. And it's, it's her grandmother, and her mother is pissed about this. She yeah. can't even look at her, him. You know, it's, it's her, but it's a male sleeve. It's uh, this big guy with a beard. It's so, so amusing, and uh, some great acting from him. Yeah, no, no, uh, he he has fun with it. Uh, we also find out her partner's actually dating his dating her mother. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. there's been a running joke about how she's like, I don't like how you're on first name terms with my mother. Clearly, she doesn't know that he's on even more familiar terms with her. But, so that's all going on. Uh, it brings up, again, some of the, the, the anti-stack stuff and the anti-sort of resurrection kind of stuff that we've been yeah. hearing about. Uh, her mother's, like, so against it that she's, like, uncomfortable with her, her mother being there uh, yes. the, the entire time. Uh, so so he explores that stuff a little bit uh, and gives us that. Uh, and also tells us that everyone still celebrates all the all the holidays because it's Halloween and... Uh, you're you're blanking, aren't you? Uh, the that was the start I was forgetting. I, I remember the Les Mortis. So it was it was the start I was yeah. struggling with. Uh, yeah. So so that's all going on. Um, I actually I thought they could have done more with it. I felt like they set up that it's it's that day and we spend most of it in a VR world and it's just Ortega's family that's kind of 
doing it. No, I get that, but I, I get the imp- I get the impression that there's more happening across the city. We're not seeing it, but I like that. The whole mm. reason that she's brought her grandmother back is because that's the day that the dead come back and visit. Oh so yeah, it's kind there's, there's of a, nice. There's a not irony, but like there's a just a, as, a, as a just a cherry to it. There's a cherry on the cake. There, there is just there having is. it on that yes. day, and I, I think. Uh, not not only that, but the idea that we learn that this is a normal thing where people rent out. You can rent out a sleeve for a day, yeah, for for special occasions where you want to bring your go, your, go see a you know a birthday or yeah anniversary that that kind of thing. So so even though she, we know she didn't rent it, she just kind of stole a perp <laughs> because why do what not? you gotta do? Uh, so so that was the whole thing, and yeah, that was also a plot. The rest of it was pretty much the, the, the VR and the, the flashbacks. Yes. Uh, and obviously the people who are sort of controlling him when he's on the table and they're like putting the, the, the computer stuff in and uh, all the rest of it. Uh, meanwhile, Alice is getting like cut open. Like They've just got her like split open at the other end of the room and they're just like putting her organs into boxes. and Yeah, it's it's not nice looking, is it? It's pretty grim. Um, but yes, yeah, so there's a lot of him like with with getting tortured. You know, he's almost setting fire at one point. He's he's shot. He's stabbed. He's everything else. Uh, and we're getting these flashbacks, and we see that this is like part of the training that they they, they train for this specifically. So they go into VR in the flashback, and this is actually sort of when he makes his first move in Falcon, or where where he kind of like is in for a kiss, and that's actually how he tricks her into like sort of dropping the VR. Yeah, because uh, she's like, hey, that was a dirty move. Like, well, it worked, didn't it? <laughs> like, like, he's, got, he's not right. wrong. Yeah, um, I I do think this episode again suffers a little bit from the, the the length. Yeah, I agree with that. I think it's a bit too heavy on the flashback. It, it was still the sh- it was actually the shortest episode so far, but I still feel like you could have cut maybe ten minutes and just made it feel a bit tighter and have the pacing be a bit more snappy. And uh, I felt to, it more in this one. To the point, yeah, it's funny because uh, people taped this up as like being a great episode, and I liked it, but I, I wouldn't say it was the the game changer. Uh, no, it was uh, some really good ideas, a great action sequence at the end. There's, there's one great action sequence when he wakes up and he basically grabs both of his guns and starts going to town. And uh, his speech of, like, you, you know, come on, I've just got myself out of this. You really think I'm that guy? Hmm. Uh, he goes around. Because that's the thing, uh, Demi the, the twin, he thinks he's this guy, Riley. And we, we, Riker. He, right, Riker, sorry. Uh, I, do you know what it is? I'm having Buffy flashbacks because there's a Buffy actor in there. I knew I was waiting for this. Warren here, Warren, you know, bored now, f- you know, flaying, flaying him, like all that. Uh, television show Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So you know, I've got, I've got Riley in my head. And never, no one ever wants Riley in their head. So clearly, I'm <laughs> That's having a terrifying. Thought. I'm having problems. Uh, so I Riker, he keeps thinking. I should be thinking of Star Trek. Next gen. Yeah. Shift gears. Aye, right. Riker. Uh, but everyone, he he keeps thinking he's Rakers. Ah, oh, admit you're him. Admit you're him. Which is, to be fair, that must be a thing that is you have to interrogate to make sure someone is who they say they is. If you suspect they might be someone else, because yeah. we're we're in sleeve world here. And at the end, when Ortega goes to the crime scene, because she gets called out to the crime scene with her partner, and like, holy shit, this the entire place has been like. And it's worth mentioning on his way out. Kovac was like shooting them all like with the with the energy weapon. He was making sure they were all staying dead. Most of them. We got a couple of payoffs for the the, the Chekhov's gun. Oh yeah, yeah. Because he, he shot the one guy and then the other guy got killed in the, the back. Yeah, yeah. You know the back, the back. I don't know. The, the the boomerang effect. The retract, the retracting part of it. <laughs> sure. The second go round. Um, but uh, so so she's pissed. She goes over to the to the to the hotel. Uh, and it drops this big revelation on us is that he basically has figured out well you were tracking me because he, he leaves a little sign for you he leaves he leaves this body like with the finger up uh with the, the tracker and yeah and he's like yeah he, he seemed to be pretty sure i was this guy Riker, and you've not had a chance to put a tracker in me since i woke up and that's not that, that's not something i think we ever really thought about we just kind of assumed uh eh, she she did it right yeah. at the start yeah we, we, we weren't too sure on how they get in Cause, yeah, because well, this is the thing, we didn't know what the tracker looked like, so for all we knew, it was like a little thing she just tagged on the back of his shirt yeah, or something. Like, yeah, it's on the back of his neck, shoulder, you know, something yeah. like that. We, we, we have no idea what the technology looked like, so we didn't know how easy it would be to like, just kind of put it on someone. Uh, but, but when we see it's like a little disc thing, it's like, okay, that's not something you can just easily, you know, insert into someone or, or yeah. whatever it is. And he's like, hey, so you must have already had a tracker on this body. 
on the sleeve. So we find out that he's in this body of this guy, Raker. Or at least this is what the body Raker was in beforehand. Yes. Seemingly. That's what he seems to think. And he basically makes Ortega talk by threatening to damage the body. So she seems to care about this body. She, she has a connection yeah, to this body. Uh, which is why she probably hates him even more because it's like it's perverting someone she cares about. Right, and we know from what Dimmy the Twin was saying that Riker, I think he was a cop, and mm-hmm. he he planted some evidence that put Riker away. So Riker's on ice. Yeah, yeah, because uh, because when he um, when he wakes up, he actually pretends he's that at first. Cause he's like, oh, you just you, you put an agent and you torture them. Like you, you guys are all going to be fired. Like, and that's how he it, yeah. he convinces them all to like uh, help him out, out. And then of course he goes on his killing spree, but. Uh, interesting ideas. I still think that the show has this thing, it, which is really it's really irritating in a way because it's like you've got these really cool ideas and the, the, this the, all this stuff you've just revealed is really cool. It's, it's all really interesting stuff. Okay, so this body belonged to someone who was kind of important beforehand, and mm. some people will recognise this body and have a problem with it for one reason or another. Yeah, it's something that we hadn't considered because obviously we knew it was a repurposed body. Mm. And okay, that's all fine. That's cool. Um, and the idea that, that Ortega and the reason why she's so invested in Kovac is because she already had a connection to that body like that's that's all good stuff I do feel that like the actual reveal of it again just feels a little bit clunky like, it feels a little bit I, I think this show does have a problem with exposition where it always feels like it has more to give us because we forgave yeah. it a lot in the first episode because it was setting up the world and there was a lot of just core things it had to tell us it was but this you kind of just had a guy monologuing at him while he's lying on a table Exactly. It was like here's some exposition. He's holding a blowtorch while he's doing it, but he's still monologuing. Yeah, he's still monologuing and giving you exposition. And I feel like last episode again, most of the interesting ideas seem to be coming from uh, from exposition for the most part. They do. I, I feel like the ideas themselves are really good, mm. but it could do with a better way of executing them and implementing them to and giving us that information. Yeah. Um, and I, th- I think that combined with the slightly again, this is a this is a very Netflix. But admittedly, I feel like most of the Netflix shows recently have not fell into this trap. But it is it is falling into that that Marvel Netflix show trap where the episodes are all just a little bit too long. It is. It is. Alternatively, like this one, I feel like it could have had the same length, but cut some of the flashbacks and this conversation that we're going to get to at the end of mm. who is Riker. I'd have liked that in this episode because I don't think it's that much of a cliffhanger. And I feel like we were pre- presumably just going to start with that next episode because I feel like we can't skip over it. Yeah. So I feel like we should have cut a little bit early on and had that conversation at the end as in had that emotional beat to go after the big action moment. I think I think it comes down to just the, the classic the classic thing, show don't tell, right? It mm. just Now, admittedly, I've probably seen this similar thing uh, before and that's why I'm saying it this way. But I mean, there's always, you know, Writers go into a room and like think of something that's new and fancy. Yeah, but, we're not right as you are. But like, just think of how much better this reveal would be. Let, let's say we had a flashback episode here of or, or, Ortega, right? And we're following her doing a story in the past. So she's on a case and she's working on something. And then towards the end of the episode, out walks what, who we see as Kovac, but it's not Kovac. It's someone she knew from before. And it'd be a visual reveal because we'd see him. It would, it would. But they, I, don't, I mean... Assuming they don't want to do flashbacks for anyone else at this point. Well, yeah, but that, I mean that's that's their own crutch, that's their own problem if they're locking themselves into that. And but, it is, yeah. Well, what, what I'm saying is, is that if it was a visual reveal where we put it together ourselves rather than being told it, it would be inherently much more exciting as a reveal. The idea is still pretty cool. I like the ideas, but I feel like just I, how I, they're telling us these things is very mediocre. Honestly, I think this is where it fails as an investigative show because it is. It's all about investigations. It's you know, it's the mm. mysteries, and we're not being given breadcrumbs to go to solve it. It doesn't even have to be visual. We can get little clues that we can put together ourselves before we get to the reveal. But here, other than just assuming, oh, this body could have been someone else, you know, just making that assumption, there was nothing to hint at it really. No, because I mean, hell, I even thought like the body was in storage for a while before they used it. Or something, right, that's what yeah, I like, assumed as well. Yeah. But we were never told that. But that was just an assumption. Hmm. And uh, I just feel like we don't get any build up to these reveals. It's just here's a monologue with the answer, but we have no time to detect it ourselves first. It's, I mean, I mean, even taking away the detection, just going back to the whole idea of the exposition being what they're relying on for all the, the new information is, 
Uh, back, go back to the last episode when we found out. Oh, so okay, so the daughter's in the mother's body. She's, she's got a daughter, uh, you know, one of her mother's clones, and she's done that sleeve, and she's using it to have sex with some random, you know, waiter. Yeah, great idea. Is. Right, great idea. Right, and she catches catches him, and like in the same scene he catches her, he just says, "You're not who you say you are," and then she just explains exactly what's going on. No, no, I, I will agree that that is a problem. He could have, you know, let her go and then kind of. F- gone a few scenes uh, about it of noticing things were weird because and again other than just that's, walking on there there's nothing to say that she's weird before that and here's the thing if we're going back to reveal this with a visual instead of just telling us something it's really easy in that case because you just have her being the same you know have her walk into the, the scene and then have the actual mother walk into the scene oh shit there's two of them what's going on and then explain it because it would yeah. make us go hey <laughs> like this is not right but there's two of them I think the bigger problem with that, going back, is that we had no reason to suspect it wasn't Miriam because, well, she just slept with Kovacs the night before. Yeah, we, so why couldn't she be cheating with this other guy? Yeah, that was basically my. Until he said something in that episode last time, my assumption was okay, so she just does this on a normal basis then. This is just by, you know, day to day. And the, the thing is, uh, you know, Bancroft himself said that, yeah, she does that. I know this. Yeah. Uh,. So again, it's just it's, it's the way it's actually revealing its information is just really uninteresting, uh, and it's kind of, it's kind of the biggest thing that that and the, the the overlong episodes are kind of the biggest things holding it back uh, mm. from from really kind of nailing it and being like this great so, show to be excited about. As it is, I, I still think it's a pretty decent watch, but it's not uh, you know setting the world on fire. No, it's true. It hasn't lived up to expectations, that's for sure. In that sense, yeah. Um, but hey, uh, obviously the 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 pr- the production value is probably the biggest draw. I think in a lot of ways. Absolutely, um, that and the acting is pretty great across the board. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I've not found like even all the extras and the small roles. I found them all to be pretty good so far. Yeah, um, and I think James Purefoy's um. Maybe hamming it up a little. He, yeah, he's hamming it up uh, with the whole you know eccentric British. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm the rich man and everyone belongs to me kind of attitude. Yeah, yeah. So he's having up a little bit. But, um, yeah. So as far as this episode goes, I, I do think it was better than the last one. I, I wasn't as, like, bored. I, I still preferred the last one, but we, we had weird opinions on that yeah, we comparatively. Had, yeah, we yeah. had different opinions on that. Uh, but this one didn't wow me either. It was kind of like, okay, obviously the gunfight when he wakes up, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, again, the IDs that are brought up are pretty interesting. Um, I feel like the VR feels like it has no consequence because we know, sure, mm. he can. He feels the pain. We're told that he feels the pain. He'll probably crack if he doesn't do something. But because we're just watching it happen, especially when we know sleeves are disposable anyway, it's kind of like, all right, kill his body and just stick him in another one that you've got. Anybody, it doesn't matter. Torture that body. Does, you can just put him through this for real. Yeah, but that's expensive to keep giving them new sleeves. Yeah, but they can just give them shit sleeves that are dying anyway. It doesn't have to be good ones. Yeah, but can anyone just give them new sleeves? Like, it's, it's, right now it seems like you have to go to the place that does the sleeving to, to uh, sleeve uh, them. Maybe, that's that's fair. I mean, I, <laughs> I assume there's a, a black market level to this anyway, and an underground that can do it. So... Yeah, this is a weird complaint to me. It's convenience. I don't think it's not about causing him more punishment. It's about what is convenient for them to do. No, no, that's fair. It just it felt like it has no consequence to it because it's like, well, it's all virtual. I mean, vinyl might sound better than Spotify, but Spotify is convenient and you can get it instantly, and it's all there. It's true. So that that's 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 kind of how I read that. I never even thought about it. This is just you being uh, weird. Just just a thought I had. But <laughs> fine. Um, yeah. So. So yeah, all, all the stuff that it reveals in, at the end. Okay, yeah, it's all all interesting. Uh, it is, and I, I I really would have liked to have the inevitable emotional beats that are coming at the end of this episode. Where after that action sequence, after the torture, that you know was visually great. Give us something emotional to back it up at the end. Whereas instead, it's just going to be at the start of the next episode, which is a weird place for that sort of moment. Uh, it, it usually to have that sort of thing at the start of any episode is strange. Mm-hmm. Yeah, here's actually something that I, th- I, I thought they were setting up uh, Vernon was going to go like, because they, they start to question, hey, where's Kovac? He's not, he's not here. He's just been a while. 
and he starts looking into like, okay, we got like a, can you track his thing? Where is he? And it implies that he's going to go looking for him, right? And it's actually after Kovac has already woken up. He's walking out with the decapitated head of the guy from Winona Earp. Yep. And he shoots, you know, because eh, 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 uh, Vernon's got an uh, exospine guy. Uh, he's, he's like forcing him to show, oh, where did you take him? Come on, show me. And it's like, oh, he didn't need your help. And he just kind of jokes, ah, oh, you're late. And I'm like, I feel like after his, like, not being very useful last episode at the party, and, like, specifically calling him, even Poe was giving him shit for it in this episode, I feel like it would have been a nice thing for him to actually be useful and help get him out. Yeah, definitely. Because uh, he doesn't really do anything. He starts the investigation, goes, yeah, I'll go get him. Yeah, and, then... and that, that, that first scene, I was like, oh, good, we're setting up a plot where he's going to go and help, like, save him. And then we don't see him all episode until the scene where Kovac has already escaped. And he's like, hey, and, you're and, late. And the problem is, it shows us that he was capable. He tracked this guy down. He's here. Yeah. But ultimately, it didn't really matter, did it? It, it feels worthless. It feels like, yeah. what was the point? <laughs> Almost. Also, it occurred to me, his name was, it was you know, on Winona Rope. It wasn't Bebo, it was Bobo. Bobo. I knew it was similar. It, it just, it clocked in my head like five minutes ago. Yeah. We were questioning that last episode, in case you just watched this one and not the last one for some reason. You're like, what's the Beeble thing? I called them Beeble. Yeah, Bobo. I knew it was something like that. Uh, That's Legends of Tomorrow, uh, given the Beeble word. But I knew it was something similar to that. Yeah. Um, Yeah, so I think that's a shame. I think it's weird. I feel like, okay, okay, you're saying that he's capable of doing this, but ultimately it doesn't matter that he's capable. He's like... You get, like I thought this was going to be his chance to prove that he was worthy of being the it's, sidekick. It's again, it's, it's he's capable, but he's not good enough, is he? He's not he's not on the same level as, as Kovac. So, well, that's the thing, though. Even if he succeeded, I wouldn't necessarily see him as in the same level. It'd just no, be... exactly, but this is another way of going, look, he's, he's, he's good enough to get there eventually, but eh, Kovac is better. He'll get on his own first. Yeah, but we didn't need that again. We, we didn't. No, I agree. We didn't need that at all. It, like... Give him a chance to shine to show that he's like a, a worldly partner where, okay, he can actually trust them maybe to watch his back now. And instead, it just kind of feels like, eh, whatever. Yeah, pretty much. I don't know. I don't know. A lot of wasted potential in this show, isn't there? There is. So, uh, and it seems to be compounding a little bit as we as we go episode by episode. Um, so, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how episode five goes uh, and see how we feel after that. Um, I mean, I'm generally, I'm, I'm generally enjoying it, but it's, it's kind of, it's went from I'm excited about this as being the next big thing that I'm really into to oh, I like having it on, and I'll, I'll you know, I'll think about the ideas and stuff, but it's not like it's, it's one of those that every time there's another problem, it adds on and it gets more and more. So yeah, it's kind of going okay. It's starting to frustrate me. Hmm. Uh. So so no. Uh. So we'll see. We'll see uh, what episode 5 brings. Let us know what you thought of this one in the comments below. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on the Twitter. Is it mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates? If you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash mailfuzztv and you can uh, you can see what's on avail- available over there. There's a link in the description, uh, but otherwise that is us. So thank you very much once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching TV, guys. Have you got any vanilla?